Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. This is another episode from my new It's a Christmas Season card making video series for 2021. In this video, I have a mini slimline card with a touch of hot foil stamping and some die cutting created in traditional Christmas colors, red, green, and a little bit of white. I started working on this card by doing my foiling. I wanted to have a sentiment foiled at the bottom of my panel, and this is a panel of midnight green cardstock from Simon Says Stamp, and it is cut to three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches, and this will make the front of my card. The sentiment reads, family and friends are the true gifts of Christmas, and this sentiment comes from the Spellbinders Gifts of Christmas Glimmer Sentiment set for 2021. I love the style of this sentiment, I love how it combines several fonts, and I think it looks very classy and fresh. I also foiled a top of the panel using a snow glimmer plate from Glimmer Christmas Village plate set, also from Spellbinders, from last year, from my Yana's Christmas Basics collection. This snow glimmer plate is just a thin border but it can be foiled repeatedly to create a wider snowy background for the card. And the snow here is very random, and you can actually move the plate a little bit to the left or to the right and customize the look of your snow on every card. So I'm going to foil this snow again in the same color of foil, and I'm using gold here. So I'm going to foil it again just to extend the snow a little bit further down. The idea for this card is to have the foiled sentiment at the bottom, the foiled snow at the top, and a car with a Christmas tree in the middle. Very simple card layout. I used my hinge method to attach the glimmer plate onto the card stock, and I foiled the second row of snow here. I find hot foiling to be an exceptional way to add lots of wow to a card, and if you're new to hot foil stamping, if you haven't tried it yet, I cannot recommend and encourage you enough. A hot foil machine is a little bit of an investment, but if you're looking to up your card making and take it to a different level, you'll be able to easily do that with the hot foil stamping and of course, a little bit of learning. I do have many videos on my YouTube channel focusing in depth on the hot foil stamping process, talking about mistakes, do's and don'ts, so I'm not going to focus on the foiling in this video. You can check the hot foiling process in detail in my hot foil stamping playlist. It is linked right here. When I look at glimmer plates, I see stamps. And glimmer plates, in a way, are stamps, but they are stamps you would use with, with foil. So instead of stamping with ink, you are stamping with various colors of foil. Here, because I used a dark color cardstock in gold foil, the foiling looks especially stunning. I also die cut a little car for this card, and I cut it several times, once from red cardstock, this is Simon's lipstick red, once from light blue cardstock, this is Spellbinder's Glacier, and once from white cardstock. This die cut has cutout details, and you can add those details by doing some inlay die cutting. So it's actually the die is designed in a way so that you need to do inlay die cutting for proper assembly. I like to add adhesive from the back of my die cut and use that adhesive to inlay the pieces in. So my car is going to be red, I'll have light blue windows and white details. I will want to pop the car on my card once I'm done assembling it, so I'm using foam adhesive squares here for that purpose. So they actually serve a double purpose. They are there to help me inlay the pieces in and they're there to help me pop the die cut onto the card. Alternatively, you can die cut the car from white cardstock and use your markers or inks or some other coloring medium to color the separate pieces in various colors. I find it easier to just cut things from various colors of cardstock and inlay them in, but that's, that's my preferred way of doing it. Now I can inlay the pieces and color my car. I've added the windows and that was pretty easy. And to add the rest of the dropouts, I'm going to place the die with the die cuts still in the die. And I intentionally did not remove the white die cut from the die. So I'm going to align it with my car die cut and then use my tool in one to push the pieces out of the die and onto my die cut. 
the little dropouts will grab onto the adhesive from the foam squares and they will easily stay in place. So this is probably the easiest way to do inlay die cutting. It's very simple and very quick. Now the car die also has additional dies to cut bumpers, wheels, and the handle on the door. There is a PDF that will help you assemble this die cut. Now I simplified the assembly of my car and I made the bumpers a bit simpler. But if you wanted to go all out, you can use the PDF and follow the instructions to assemble the car. I decked the wheels from black cardstock and the discs from gold glitter cardstock because it is a Christmas car. And I also die-cut the lights from yellow cardstock. And I just used my Barely Art glue to adhere those onto the car. Finally, I added that little handle and that was die cut from silver mirror cardstock, the same as the bumpers. And the car looks absolutely adorable. Now, this is how the car will sit on my card front. It fits perfectly on this mini slimline card size. It doesn't extend past the card and it is the most perfect size for this card. Of course, you can easily use this car on other card sizes. It will work perfectly well on an, an A2 or a four bar card or five by seven or whatever other card size you like to make. Now, I wanted my car to carry a Christmas tree on top on the roof. Spellbinders has a bottle brush tree die set and that can be used to create a tree. I die cut two layers, one from gold glitter and another layer identical piece from green cardstock and this is Simon Says Stamp Green Apple. I plan to layer and offset these layers, these two trees, to have one fuller tree. Now in this die set, the bottle brush trees, you also have a shadow die for the tree and that is what it looks like. And you can use that if you wanted to add a backer to your tree. I didn't want to use the backer or the shadow. I just wanted to have the delicate tree die cut. So I skipped adding that shadow layer onto this card. I used glue and adhered the two layers together. I shaped the tree a little bit to make it dimensional and a little fluffy. And I played a little bit with the placement. Now the special delivery car die set also comes with a die to die cut a bow and some string. The idea is to have that bow tie whatever is on the roof of the car to the car itself, making it irresistibly adorable. And the car actually comes with a little die to die cut presents. Original idea is to have the car with a bunch of presents on top, but you can swap the car for other things like this Christmas tree. I die cut the bow and the string from gold glitter cardstock and I adhere the pieces together using glue. So I went ahead and I foam mounted the car onto the card. The wheels weren't properly adhered at this point, so I took them off as I figured I could foam mount them instead and add a little bit more dimension to this card. I can never resist adding another layer of foam adhesive to pop things up. Next, I foam mounted the tree, placing it above the car, and then I added the gold string and the adorable bow. I love this die set. I think it's very clever. And this car can be used for various scenes and not just for holiday cards. The car itself is evergreen, so you can use it all year round. I used Spellbinders gold gems and embellished the car. I adhered my panel onto a mini slimline card base. It measures three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches, and I called this card done. On the screen, you can find a link to another video from my It's a Christmas Season video series featuring Christmas card making. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.